Hello everyone, I'm Ryan here. So I recently read Justice League 3001, Deja Vu, all over again. This is of course Volume 1, and I definitely enjoyed this graphic novel. Uh, I will say that it definitely paints the Justice League in, in a whole new light. Firstly, this Justice League, while they do have the same qualities, same characteristics, same abilities as uh, the Justice League that most people are used to. Uh, this one, however, they do have some limitations. And not only that, they also happen to have a lot more uh, character flaws, I guess you could say. Essentially, sometime in the 31st century, there's a scientist who decides to resurrect the Justice League and because by that time, uh, Earth, the planet Earth, is no longer known as Earth, but it's known as uh, Tacron, Tacron Galtos, some weird word like that, uh, Tacron Galtos. And it's essentially one big prison planet, so every inhabitant on the planet is some kind of criminal, serving time for some, some sort of crime. So... Uh, the scientist decides to resurrect the Justice League in, or, in order to help keep order, and he was able to he's able to get his hands on DNA from the original Justice League, but he combines it with the DNA of, I guess you'd say, host bodies, and of course, eventually, the stronger DNA wins out, takes over the host body, and that's how you pretty much get the resurrection of the Justice League. So, of course, this Superman is a lot more arrogant, much more arrogant than the original Superman. Uh, just very full of himself. Also, he doesn't have access to all of the abilities, such as he's not able to fly uh, or shoot lasers from his eyes uh, or run very fast. He can run pretty fast, but not as fast as the original Superman. Uh, but he does, he definitely has super strength. That's pretty much the one thing that he does have and utilizes the most. Uh, and then same with this Wonder Woman. She does have access to all the same abilities as, same abilities as the original Wonder Woman. She has super strength. Uh, though I believe, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, and also too, she's also a lot more arrogant as well. Uh, in fact, her and this Superman constantly having different arguments, bickering over very trivial things, and yeah, it just makes them seem much more flawed, uh, much more flawed than they need to be. Uh, one interesting thing, of course, is, uh, well, actually two, uh, there's a female Green Lantern, uh, except that this Green Lantern, she... I guess you would say she's uh, more like she embodies two genders, two genders in the same body because originally something happened where uh, the scientist kind of skimped a little on her resurrection process and therefore it's kind of like she ended up, because uh, he used the DNA of the original Green Lantern, which I believe is Hal Jordan. Uh, maybe it might have been someone else. But anyways, uh, used DNA of the original Green Lantern. And so the original Green Lantern <clears throat> was resurrected and then quickly transferred into a body of a, fem body of a female Green Lantern. And so, yeah, it's pretty confusing, but essentially, like I said, uh, this Green Lantern embodies, it's like two genders, rather supposed to represent two genders in one host body, something like that. All right. And then, uh, of course, there's a the female Flash. Uh, she's, I guess you could say her resurrection process is kind of similar to the Green Lantern, except that she... She had some 
of the DNA from the original Flash combined with her own DNA. So, yeah, essentially it's kind of like, I think, both her DNA and the original Flash's DNA kind of balance each other out. So, yeah, she doesn't really... She's pretty much just straight-up female Flash. Uh, she can run just as fast, except that uh, she's pretty reluctant in testing out how far she can actually stretch her abilities... Uh, and that's one of the things that the, the other members of the Justice League do test her on. Um, and then, of course, this Batman. Uh, it's pretty much pretty much like the same Bruce Wayne slash Batman. Uh, of course, one of the things that, that I immediately thought of, like, I, I, I wondered, you know, why do they resurrect Batman as well, since he doesn't really have any super abilities, uh... But I guess they pretty much did it for posterity, I guess, since Batman is uh, is a, a, a part of the original Justice League. Yeah, so pretty much, I mean, this Bruce Wayne Batman is pretty much the same, except that in in this future, in the 31st century, he's not a billionaire. So, and he actually points that out too. Uh, you know, the fact that you know different people keep bringing up. Well, the other members, mostly there's a couple parts with uh, Superman, and he, he tells Batman, you know, uh, aren't you supposed to be super smart and have access to all this technology? And, and then, of course, this Batman tells Superman, he said, well, well, no, that's I'm not the original Batman, and plus I'm not a billionaire anymore, so I don't have access to all those resources. So, you know, I, I don't know what you want me to do. So, uh, so it's pretty funny. There's also a lot of uh, pretty hilarious scenes. Hilarious uh, scenes and action scenes, too, uh, throughout. Definitely very interesting. Uh, also, uh, Supergirl makes an appearance, and she's, she is supposed to be the original Super Supergirl. And, yeah, I won't say any more of that because I don't want to spoil the entire storyline. Uh... Overall, it was definitely interesting. The ending, I didn't really like that much, but obviously I know there will be a continuation in Volume 2. So overall, I do give it five stars. I recommend reading, especially if you're a big fan of DC Comics, as I am. So there you go. That'll do it for this graphic novel review. Thanks for watching. As always, until next time, keep it real. Keep on rocking. Peace.